Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we are going to cover an introduction to bacterial cell structure. So let's start. So here with the help of this picture, we will try to understand the presence of different type of layers that surround a bacterial cell along with the presence of different type of structures present inside the bacterial cell. So let's try to understand each of these one by one. So here firstly we are going to observe the presence of an outermost layer okay which is shown here in purple color okay and this outermost layer which surrounds the bacterial cell is called as cell wall and now we can observe the presence of an innermost layer which is present inside the cell wall right and shown here in yellowish color this layer we call as plasma membrane and thirdly you should note here that in between this cell wall and plasma membrane there is a space okay the space that occupies between cell wall and plasma membrane is called as periplasmic space right next you should note here that this plasma membrane what i have shown here in yellowish color here what we can observe that this plasma membrane has been enfolded right or we can say this is an extension of plasma membrane or we can say invagination of plasma membrane and here it is going to form what kind of structure in bacteria this is called as mesosome okay and now we should know that plasma membrane actually surrounds a gel like matrix what we call as cytoplasm okay inside the cytoplasm several other components or we can say organelles or we can say structures are present inside bacterial cell now let's have a look on those kind of structure so in the center of the cell what we can observe the presence of this filamentous genetic material and here we call it as nucleoid okay Next you should note here that in addition to the genetic material which is present in the center of the cell an extra chromosomal DNA molecule is also present in case of bacterial cell and that we call as plasmid okay. Now what we can observe we can observe here these orange in color these bodies are representing us what the presence of ribosome okay and in addition to ribosomes what we can observe that granular structures are present here like what are shown here in bluish and pinkish color they are representing us what the presence of inclusion bodies okay and in addition to inclusion bodies some micro compartments can also be observed to be present inside the bacterial cell which have been shown here in white color and these are called as what gas vacuoles okay next you should note here that this filament which is shown here in yellowish color it is called as flagella Next you should know that in addition to this hair like appendage or filamentous structure what we call as flagella small small thread like or we can say hair like structures are also present on the outermost side of the bacterial cell and these are called as what these are called as fimbri right in addition to fimbri we can also observe the presence of some larger in size or we can say bigger in size uh, type of filaments which are bigger than the fimbri and these are shown here in blackish color these are called as what pili right and next to pili here i have shown by the means of this dots the presence of polysaccharide material okay or we can say sometimes it can be proteinaceous material which is present on the outside of the bacterial cell and this is generally called as what capsule right and capsule or we can say slime layers these are present on the outermost side of the some of the bacterial cells but it is not present in case of all bacteria so this was all about an introduction to structural component now in brief we are going to talk about function of each of these structural component what we have labeled here so let's start with the first one that is cell wall if we talk about cell wall then you should know cell wall in bacteria is made up of a complex polysaccharide that we call as peptidoglycan and cell wall plays a very important role when it comes to giving shape and protection from osmotic stress to a bacterial cell okay and on the basis of nature of cell wall we can also classify bacteria into two types what we call as gram positive and gram negative bacteria right now let's talk about the second structural component or we can say the layer what surrounds the bacterial cell and is the innermost layer that is plasma membrane if we talk about plasma membrane then you should know plasma membrane of course just like other cells animal cells plant cells where it is present it also here in case of bacteria act as a selectively permeable barrier and it monitors nutrient and waste transport 
Secondly, you should know here that plasma membrane in case of bacteria is also a site of important metabolic processes like respiration and photosynthesis. And it is also known to play important role in case of chemotaxis. What is chemotaxis? Whether a particular bacteria should be attracted toward a chemical or it should move away from that particular chemical. Okay, That will be decided as a result of chemotaxis process. And of course, chemotaxis is regulated or controlled by plasma membrane. This is all about plasma membrane. Now we are going to talk about periplasmic space. Periplasmic space, as I already told you, it is the space which is present between cell wall and plasma membrane. So this space is known to contain hydrolytic enzymes, binding proteins for nutrient processing and uptake. Right. So this is about periplasmic space significance. Now we are going to talk about the fourth point that is mesosome. Mesosome, as I already told you, it is a kind of membrane invagination or infolding. Right. Mesosomes are known to play important role in case of replication and also in cell wall synthesis of bacteria. Let's talk about the point number fifth here, cytoplasm. Cytoplasm where most of the structural component associated with bacterial cells are present plays a very important role or we can say is a site of metabolic processes. Okay, Like glycolysis, Krebs cycle involved in energy generation for a bacterial cell, they get operated inside the cytoplasm only. Okay. Now let's talk about the point number six, what we call as nucleoid. Nucleoid is the term what we use to represent localization of genetic material. Okay, And what we can note here that DNA or we can say genetic material present in bacterial cell is actually not enclosed in any membranous envelope. That's why bacteria are classified as prokaryotic type of cell, not eukaryotic type of cell because of the lack of a true nucleus presence in case of bacterial cell. Next, we are going to talk about point number seven, what we have labeled here as plasmid. In addition to the genetic material, an additional molecule of DNA, what we call as extra chromosomal DNA is also present in case of bacterial cell and that we call as plasmid. Plasmid actually gives some kind of genetic advantages to the bacteria as plasmids are of different type. Some plasmids are having what kind of genes? Antibiotic resistance genes, which help the bacteria to resist towards a particular antibiotic. Some plasmids are a kind of virulent plasmid which help the bacteria to show virulence okay, towards a particular host. And some plasmids are conjugative plasmids, which help the bacteria to take part in conjugation. Okay, So this is about point number seven, that is plasmid. Now we are going to talk about point number eight, that is ribosome. If we talk about ribosome, of course, ribosomes are freely lying where in the cytoplasm and they take part in protein synthesis. We all know that ribosome in bacterial cell are of which type? 70S type. Okay. 70S ribosome is further made up of two subunits, 50S and 30S. On the other hand, when we talk about eukaryotic cells, that is plant and animal cells, their 80S type of ribosomes are present. Okay. Now, this was about ribosomes. Let's talk about the point number nine now, that is inclusion bodies. If we talk about inclusion bodies, then you should know inclusion bodies actually represent a kind of aggregation of organic and inorganic materials. And generally, inclusion bodies are also called as storage reserve for carbon, phosphate and other substances. Like if we talk about carbon reserve, then polyhydroxybutyrate is generally found as a carbon reserve or inclusion body in bacteria. And if we talk about phosphate reserve, then polyphosphate is a very good example. And always remember, inclusion bodies are generally found in granular form or we can say in crystal form. Now, inclusion bodies don't only cover the storage reserve. They also include some of the other micro compartments as I have labeled here as gas vacuoles. Okay, so gas vacuoles which represent a kind of micro compartments. They are also a part of or they also are studied under the umbrella of inclusion bodies only. Gas vacuoles here are known to help the bacteria for floating in aquatic environments. Next you should know here we have mentioned here about 11 number point that is flagella. If we talk about flagella always remember flagella is a kind of filamentous structure. And it helps the bacteria in what movement or we can say it is a kind of locomotory organ. In bacteria where flagella is present to those bacteria we call as motile bacteria and bacteria which lack flagella they are actually called as non-motile type of bacteria. Okay. And if we talk about flagella it is known to contain three different parts filament, hook and basal body. Okay. Now let's talk about the point number 12 that we have labeled here as fimbri. Fimbri if we talk about fimbri is also a kind of structure of bacterial cell which is present on the outer side of the bacterial cell and of course it helps the bacteria in attachment. Always remember to a maximum of 1000 fibri can be found to be present on a bacterial cell. And now we are going to talk about point number 13 which is also going to represent a hair like or we can say thread like surface appendage 
and of course it is bigger than or we can say large in size when we compare it with that of fimbri and here we are going to call it as pili if we talk about pili pili also helps the bacteria in what bacterial mating right and always remember pili are of many types some pili take part in bacterial mating uh, right like conjugation where sex pilus is involved on the other hand some pili like type 4 pili are also known to provide bacteria movement okay now we are going to talk about 14 number point that is capsule if we talk about capsule capsule is also a kind of outermost layer which surrounds the bacterial cell but of course it is not present in case of all bacterial cell and capsule is generally made up of polysaccharide material but in some bacteria it, it has also been reported to be of amino acids okay now capsule helps the bacteria in adherence to surfaces and it also add towards virulence property of bacteria by providing the bacteria resistant towards phagocytosis okay so this was all about bacterial cell structural components along with their functions in brief and if you found it helpful then don't forget to press like and subscribe to our channel thank you so much keep watching